In this video, I'm going to show you how to find the frame rate and sample rate of a movie. Set your DAW's frame rate and sample rate to match the movie. Import the movie and its audio track and set SMPTE start times, SMPTE offsets, and other settings. To show the frame rate and sample rate of a movie, on a Mac, double click on the movie, which will open in QuickTime. On Windows, you can use something like VLC. In QuickTime, I'll go to the Windows menu and choose Show Movie Inspector. You'll see audio format, 48 kilohertz, and the encoded frames per second is 23.98. Make a note of this. In Digital Performer, the first thing I want to do is make sure that my second counter is set to frames. Then I'm going to set my frame rate at 23.976 frames per second. I'll import the movie. This opens up a sidebar. Double click to pop out of the consolidated window. The time code reads one hour, and that's what it's set to in the frame counter. But if I needed to change that, I would go to set movie start time. Right now it's at one hour and that's what I need. So I'm gonna hit okay. So if I hit play, you can see that the time code is in sync. What if you wanted some pre-roll? Go to project, conductor track, insert measures. And I'm gonna insert two measures at the start of measure one and I need to check maintain all times following the insertion point. So I hit OK. And now you can see I have two measures before measure one. So I'm going to hit play. And at measure one, the movie starts. And I'm in sync. A feature that's unique to Digital Performer is chunks. And this allows me to create new sequences so I can compose new cues for each scene if I want. So I'm going to go to Sequence 2 and enable it. And I'm going to find where the second scene starts. And it's about right here. And I'm going to rewind just a little bit. Okay. So here I have 1 hour, 25 seconds, 10 frames. I go to set chunk start time at one hour, 25 seconds, and 10 frames. So here I am in the second sequence, and this time code is where this sequence starts. So if I hit play, it continues from that point. So sequence two is where I could write music for the second scene. If I go back to sequence one, everything is still the same here. 